As a React developer, you want to build cutting edge web applications. And in this video, I will share the tools I use to make the development process easier and better. So in this video, I'm not talking about tools as for example, libraries, but more like non NPM related external software or sites. So I'm about to sum up a pretty big list of tools and I highly encourage you to play with them a little bit as well. Now, if you hear about a tool and you'd like to learn more about it and like to see a dedicated tutorial on that specific tool, let me know down in the comments. As for comparing NPM packages, you know, there's like so many libraries out there as of now, and also a lot of, you know, packages that are very much related to each other, but are different. And that makes the decision process really hard. So I like to use openbase.com to well, kind of like check out which libraries are out there. And what's great about OpenBase is that it allows people to share their experiences with libraries. And it also summarizes the statistics, for example, the, um, you know, in terms of, of uh, maintenance, uh, downloads and things like that. And it collects them all on a sort of dashboard, which is great. And it also allows you to find alternative package to a certain library you're looking into. So that tool definitely makes the decision process a lot easier for me. So when it comes down to analyzing code, especially if you're working in a team, PR pull requests are, you know, a great way to get feedback on your code. However, especially if you're working alone on a project or, you know, want to have some help other than your colleagues or, or people you are working with, I recommend you to use DeepScan. And what DeepScan is, it's essentially a static analysis tool and it analyzes your entire code base and checks for, you know, potential um, mistakes or, you know, just common things that go wrong in, in React code bases. So that tool is really nice to use if you want to have like a second opinion about the code you just wrote. So for checking the security um, of my code base, I'd like to use three tools. The first one is the Snake Advisor um, tool, which is a site, it's comparable to OpenBase, but it focuses on the security uh, side of things of a library, for example, vulnerabilities that are being found. And that, well, is also something I use in the decision process when I'm comparing packages, for example. Another tool I like to use is Snick Code, which is also available as a Visual Studio Code extension. And that checks your code, kind of like comparable to DeepScan um, for security issues. And the same goes for HCL AppScan, which is also available as a Visual Studio Code extension. Um, so I can highly recommend that one as well. However, I have a video uh, which you can find uh, down below in the description, which is about security and how to, well, how to essentially maintain security in your uh, React code base. And there I will, will further explain those three tools um, that I like to use. The React Developer Tools extension for Chrome, which is, in my opinion, well, like the most unmissable tool in your toolkit as a React developer. You mainly use that for three things. The first of all, tracking state, checking your elements. It just gives a, like a nice overview of the components in your application. And also you can use the profiler that comes with it, which um, helps you with analyzing potential performance problems in your application. If you'd like to know more about how to use the profiler, I recommend you to check out the video I made on how to improve the performance of React apps, which is part of my free React course right here on YouTube. Visual Studio Code Snippets. Really nice because very often you are reusing a certain piece of code um, every time throughout your code base. For example, when creating a new React component or creating forms or creating like um, like a context API, well, the logic that goes in there, right? So your boilerplate, which is kind of comparable to, uh, for example, like a Redux um, slice or reducer. And uh, especially in those cases, I like to use the Visual Studio Code 
um, snippets function where you can essentially really easy copy and paste a certain piece of code, edit it, and then, well, there you have your code without having to, you know, write everything or find a certain file on your PC. So, um, yeah, really, really easy. Uh, I will share the snippets I use down in the description uh, together with a guide on how to, um, well, use Visual Studio Code snippets. When it comes down to design, um, I'd like to use, well, when I would categorize it, I would say if you are looking for mockups, I'd like to use the Figma community or Dribble or Behance right there. Um, UI and UX designers share their creations and it's really a nice spot to, well, get inspiration from for building a new app. If you're looking for mock or stock images, I recommend you to use Unsplash, which has a great variety of um, stock photos, which are of pretty good quality. And when you need to use icons, I recommend you to use the ReShot, right? These are all uh, free from any, well, you can use them in commercial products uh, uh, without a problem. So uh, great tool as well. There's also quite a few Visual Studio Code extensions I can recommend you to use. The first one being auto import. So for example, if you have assets in your source folder, for example, like SVG um, icons or whatsoever, then in Visual Studio Code, at least as of now, the autofill is not working. So um, that's pretty, well, annoying. So if you use auto import, the auto import extension, it gives you these suggested paths to the right files. Prettier, if you're not yet using Prettier, then, well, probably the first time you'll be using it, uh, it, it makes you wonder what it does to your code and why people even like to use it. But especially in, in large code bases, if you're working with multiple people together, you'd like to have a sort of standard of code formatting and Prettier is by far the most used one uh, so I can highly recommend you to use it as well so you don't have to worry anymore about formatting your code. Rainbow brackets, which provides the same color for the same level of brackets. SVG preview, which is great because it now allows you to um, well check how SVGs look like in your code editor without having to you know, try to find the, the file in your explorer and then open it up with like a, like an image viewer. If you are using stealth components, use VS Code stealth components, which gives you the syntax highlighting and IntelliSense in JavaScript or TypeScript files. The library, why did you render? And even though it's a library, so pretty different from the other tools I, I just, uh, just um, told you about, um, I do like to include it in this video because you use it more as a tool. And what it helps you with is to identify unnecessary re-renders, which can, um, well, improve the performance of your app. And the last tool I'd like to use is Google Lighthouse, which you can find in your um, DevTools, which helps you with analyzing potential performance, accessibility, and SEO problems. Thanks so much for watching again. If you have any tools you like to use, I'm definitely curious about them. So please let me know down in the comments so other people can see it as well. And yeah, having that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.